thank you thank you everyone for joining the last panel discussion of the day i think so so uh, we would like to make it engaging and the completely uh, uh, bi directional conversation from your side also so let's let's participate uh, whatever the questions you have at the last you also please engage and ask the questions to our steam panelists so the topic of the discussion if you talk about like uh, the day d those days are gone when we were th thinking about the uh, traditional approach in the security right uh, the mindset of the hacker is something where they are leveraging the ai in the best way and somehow we have to also look into the cyber security defenses right which is completely ai driven because we talked about a lot of the controls like the preventive controls like firewalls in the system firewalls to next generation firewalls ips ids wafs those all are there but the modern approach needs something which is faster in response detecting the anomalies and the patterns and then responding to the threats accordingly so the scale at which even you see the complexity of the attacks and sophistication the way attackers are leveraging ai right so we need that mindset to tackle those attacks and combat those attacks with the controls which are more mature more robust in nature and more ai driven so uh, to start with we would like to hear it out from all the steam panelists also so how they are leveraging the ai in their organizations to mitigate the threats effectively so uh, the first question uh, to uh, mr umakan to you uh, so when we talk about the real time detection right so particularly in network defense that is very important right because you you can't think like that okay uh, real time defense should be there but it should be something where network defense is something which is not getting appropriately taken care so what are the key challenges in implementing these technologies effectively when we talk about the real time threat detection first of all we have to understand the ai uses earlier traditional method when ai was not there we are using a signature based detection technologies and uh, currently if you're talking about current era era is signature is outdated now sometime it is having a majority of data we cannot process and something that signature is not there then then everything will be going collapse <coughs> in the current scenario we are using ai where with the real time threat attack using machine learning with the ai solution if you're talking about currently a lot of ai tools are there which is already integrated with the network defense center and the real time monitoring using ai is giving, uh, giving a value add service whenever any any threat are coming it is the real time going to detect the technologies and going to provide the appropriate response mechanism with this the ai we are using a threat intelligence platform where we are using a ti feed and using machine learning we immediately we can populate the result what is uh, what is the attack vector and how it attack is happening and what kind of network vector is there this kind of challenge is there definitely but uh, but coming to the, the the final conclusion about how ai is going to use in network defense we have to proper investigate what what tools are, are, are we can integrate with the existing solution integration main challenge is there because uh, some tools are is not supporting to ai if talking about currently microsoft coming in highly some of the sentinel they are going to integrate with the co-pilot or just like ibm ibm detection tools ibm source or ibm sim tools they also coming in watson so they are going to provide a real time threat intelligence <coughs> and that is going to help to the uh, reduce the risk and mitigate the risk that is the common common is coming here that's it from my side yeah, so you you talked about very important point that the complete overall of the network defense is not required the most important thing is how you are going to leverage the ai practice within the existing cyber security infrastructure because when we talk about uh, particularly traditional based approach in security like you uh, signature based approach right so the signature based attack can detect a certain set of attacks which are mainly known attacks but when we talk about the zero day attacks these day they are more or less ineffective and that's why you have to leverage the ai capabilities not for the complete overall but to integrate within the system that is very important key takeaway uh, out of the points what you mentioned 
one more point actually currently if you're talking about any attack vector or any attack organization they are heavily investing in ai technologies and they are coming to the uh, any organization to targeted attack or any large kind of attack and they are more going to expert in the ai so if you are not investing this uh, you're not doing any integration then definitely you are going to lag behind you will not able to provide the adequate detection your network and maybe sometime zero to zero day attack we are not able to handle how we are going to take the further mitigate our risk in our nice and larger scale that is that is the point exactly so to detect accurately these anomalies right so you need the modern and re redefined approach now coming to you sunil just wanted to uh, hear your feedback also on this topic yeah, yeah. so <coughs> I would again go by this fact that AI, though it is in the nascent stages, but it's playing a major role in uh, augmenting our cybersecurity. Uh, one of the points that I would want to highlight is that uh, the data, there's a lot, the abundance of data, and you need to you need to have a, some sign, some kind of a protection for that data. And AI tools are being used, but they, it, it's a cat and mouse game, basically. The AI is progressing, so is cybersecurity. So cybersecurity versus AI is a typical cat and mouse game where it's like running after a moving bus. And, and with the technology moving so fast, uh, steps need to be taken. Organizations are taking steps. In fact, our organization is also taking a lot of steps in this direction. And we are trying to make sure that we use the right tools. Again, the selection of the tools is very, very important. And there's more of misuse rather than use if you look from a cybersecurity perspective. AI is being more of vulnerabilities are there. It's being more of misuse rather than use. And so you have to be, you have to, you have to be ahead of uh, the cyber criminals, that's it. You have to be one step ahead, basically. Exactly. So because so the uh, important point is that you need to understand the context of your business and accordingly choose the right set of solutions like right. you mentioned because if you are not understanding the context of your business because uh, manufacturing sector if you see they have the complete different uh, preferences in cyber security investments being the OT into forefront right and the way even the sophistication of attacks are happening right so you would have to look into the context and then you have to say the right fitment of the tools you see, one, one of the major flaws is when, when we are employing ai to for our cyber security protection uh, we have to be very very careful about the training data the base data on which we are training it so that there is no bias there is no ai bias because there are certain ai models which could get an inbuilt bias and one has to be very very careful to eradicate that bias that, that's very important. Yeah, very, very important point. So, uh, Preeti, coming to you, any, any uh, thoughtful insights from your side also? Uh, yes, so probably I'll talk more on challenges. So when we say that we are integrating AI in our environment, so uh, though everybody wants to adopt that, but the challenges that we actually started facing is, one is related to the, when we are managing the big data, then we have to ensure that, that the infrastructure is appropriate so that there will be no latency in the data. That's where you can say that your AI tool is successful. The second one is I would like to touch upon, uh, you know, the training your AI. So we forgot that, that this tool is something it's learned from the past and then you it detect the, uh, or uh, uh, predict the future and accordingly it generates the data. So when it generates the data, you should be very assured that none of the privacy will be get impacted because of the data. Because unwillingly, or I will say, unintentionally, AI may generate the private information of your internal employees. If you are handling some, like, a social media data, then the data of all the social media users. So that's where you need to train your tool accordingly so that none of the privacy or the regulatory breach will happen. The another thing that I would like to touch upon is um, basically uh, related to the false positive. We talk about utilizing uh, tool uh, AI tool for cyber threat detection, 
but at the same time this tool will uh, the way that the tool will improvise your detection it will increase the efficacy you know uh, it can do the job of multiple uh, people at one go but at the same time if your tool is not generating the accurate result of course there is a possibility that some important event may get missed because of the false negative and sometimes it happens it will generate too many false positive so you want it that it will reduce the job of your uh, human employees but it will end up increasing the job because a lot of false positive will reaching out to the human team considering it's a potential cyber threat so that's where i think you should be very uh, you know thoughtful when preparing the plan for adopting the ai into your environment and accordingly you need to integrate so that's why we were exactly so uh, the right set of data is very important right because if if the complete analytics is getting driven by the data which is which is not completely meaningful to the context then the result is something which is uh, not not good right and we can see that lot of false positive are getting detected detected and that's why uh, when we talk about the anomaly detection it is most of one of the most important criteria so the connecting question to that is when we talk about unauthorized access attempts or any sort of you can say that uh, large volume of data transfers within the organization just because of some sort of initial access broker sitting in the system or any sort of uh, you can say that uh, dormant actions which are being in place but you are not able to detect because of your controls so how ai can help to uh, basically anomaly detection and identification of unauthorized access attempts so sunil uh, just your view points on this matter uh, one of the things there is that we could use ai tools for for basic pattern recognition yeah. because because when we are talking about unauthorized access or we are talking about uh, repetitive uh, hacking attempts uh, there has got to be some kind of a trend so we could use ai tools to establish a pattern train the train the models in a way that that pattern is uh, established and going further it could then go ahead and try to you know recognize um, any unpredictable activity so basically using predictive analysis uh, analytics to identify any um, you know offshoots any 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 outliers any time there's an outlier it just marks a red flag and could sort of give us a predictive alerting though again ai will not completely replace it will not replace human intervention you will still need some kind of a human intervention but yes it could be used for predictive alerting after recognizing patterns basically pattern recognition and uh, alerting yeah exactly so uh, what you try to say that obviously the identification of those anomalies are going to be enhanced in terms of detection but at the same time the important is that how the patterns are getting generated so once the right set of patterns are getting generated those indicators of what you can uh, we say these days indicators of attacks right not the indicators of compromise so if that is getting generated in a clear fashion then you can dedicate in time manner and even mitigate them also but again there is a risk of again it the, the flip side there is again data privacy there is also you are exposing data because you are actually training it on your logs what you could do is you could train it on your on your access logs so there is a risk of compromise of data uh, when you use hash tools. so yes th that's why ethical that, that's the flip side. are very important we'll uh, hear the viewpoints from Preeti on this matter as the discussion uh, moves forward so quickly coming to you sanjay also on this viewpoint so uh, when we are talking about ai driven anomaly detection right it all surely going to help the complete unauthorized access patterns and all those things just your viewpoints also uh basically uh the ai and uh, cyber security and security we are talking about the three different terminology but the both three terminology is a service not a product is a moreover is a controlling from the training awareness of the end users continuous monitoring and understand that threats where is coming basically if you are talking about ai the practice was in past was there but in current scenario the modernization and advanced technology adoption or the new algorithms 
the objective is that the threat the threat is a cyber security threat is viruses malware scripts email phishing that threat we can control put multiple number of products number of the technology like edr xdr signature based technology but the result is that what is the result result is awareness is a training suppose if i put edr xdr we are providing the too many trainings my organizations for email phishing don't click it don't download the things this is a issue that threat but user click it intentionally open it file that threats is broadcast and entire environment and spoil your things so my first is is the training is awareness is very much required for the end user levels second technology adoption with compatibility of the your existing environment the sir is rightly told if you talking about we adopt one of the technology like a siemens new technology the cost of 2 or 3 crore but is not compatible my environment my manufacturing industry by machine my production my plc cnc but is not compatible to adapt this technology that what should we do then we need to leverage with technology but some of the improvement is required patch management signature base uh, remove the signature but technology put of the adr actual ai base and put the some of the pattern that pattern is vulnerable that we can secure our environment after the monitoring awareness and some of the good technology exactly so uh, that's why uh, building cyber security culture is that's why very much important and in the current context if you see uh, the way we are adopting ai right ai practices into the cyber security framework we we are not considering what challenges is can bring to the security aspects itself and the contextual understanding of the your landscape then uh, fitment of the right set of solutions and how the overall employees contribution is there to the cyber security system right so that's very important and they need to be also understand how to use the ai practices and all those things so the way uh, the technologies are advancing now coming to you uh, preeti uh, uh, one more point i want to add basically uh, in the manufacturing industries any industry auto industry chemical industry fmcg any industry the end user who is the end user the end user is a supervisor mechanical background chemical background not from the it background is a purely non it people the object what is the objective the objective is production only production the concern is production and we are talking about ai but it, that target is only the production so we need to we, if you put any software any technology in your environment but if user has not ad adopting that technology exactly. that we need required to proper provide the trainings certifications on the particular tool particular software provide the benefits and the disadvantage of particular thing after that that technology would be success in the industry basically at the success is from the end user sides not from the implementer side implement just we put the implement the things yeah. the end user his is the right person to you know get the benefits so yeah so we very important point you said like uh, adoption of any technology is not important it's also important equally important to understand how the fitment and even the awareness is there ac across the organization for the adoption of the technology is important right and i rightly talked about the manufacturing context right because in manufacturing all the technologies are something which are always looking as a detrimental to the business right so uh, right set of education is required and even understanding that these all security processes which we are going to inculcate in the ot processes also is equally important for the company yeah so coming to you preeti now because when we talk about even social media data analysis right which involves uh, you can say the large data set for analysis so and and that mainly for citizen concerns right so how to balance the need for effective service delivery with the ethical and private privacy implications of the large scale data so uh, yes i think in ai privacy is the major concern and um, especially i come from the uh, 
BFSI industry where, uh, you know, for uh, every small leak, there is a penalty, either from the regulatory or from, um, you know, the compliances like the GDPR. So their privacy become paramount. So during designing of the AI, we need to think from a filtering perspective that what is the input that we are giving to the tool and how to filter your private data so that the when your AI get trained on the data that you are providing, it will not generate any kind of the uh, data which will impact the privacy of your employees or your customer. That's the first thing. The second thing is on your controls. So when I say control, those are like the cyber security and information security control, which ensures that your data is protected within the AI having right set of monitoring tool over there, even the users of the AI. There should be a proper logging and the tracking of those logs. Then the access to the system should also be ensured that it should be with the, only to the authorized person or need to know basis access to be given in the tool. That's where you can say that your tool is a proper, uh, you know, secure from the privacy point of view. Another few things, those are related to the regular, um, uh, you know, patch upgrades. Your tool should be up to date so that the data will not uh, uh, get hacked. We, uh, we should consider AI as a application. The way we are securing any other application, we should secure AI in a very similar manner. The proper uh, patching, the proper pen tests while you are deploying the new tool, and uh, there should be, um, in case if you want to do for any kind of an audit, audit should be there. Even I will say that your um, code should be regularly monitored, tracked, and uh, scanned so that it will be vulnerable, uh, it will be vulnerability free. And that's where I can say that we can protect the privacy of uh, AI systems. So interesting. So it's not about uh, security for AI, but uh, AI for security also. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's good. Uh, your your use of on these things. Yeah. Yep. Protecting data through AI actually that is main important because many organizations currently they have already blocked. Right. So and mainly in case of social yeah, media yeah, yeah, analysis. So the yeah. majority of cases is happening, but some selecting the right set of commercial AI tool which can be leverage the existing data process from social media contents, and that is the main important. The majority of cases, suppose the, that is a corrected dot, the information we are publishing in social media and the organization you belong to. Sometime you uh, use a vendor site or third party risk management altogether, data publishes all around. And this hacker group, they are using a machine learning AI together and they are making a complete event. And that is going to raw material to for attacker. So if something, some, some digital, uh, digital database you are publishing in social media network or some important uh, proprietary information publishing somewhere in other other platform. The data is collecting by a third party or anywhere, processing via machine learning or AI. They are making for large attack. But normally they are focused for the bigger where the larger interests are involved because there are a lot of investment or human intervention are required. This is not easy. If one, one single hacker group can do this process data altogether, they communicate to each other, multiple of organization hacker group they process this kind of information. So that is the main important. We have to put the restriction policy on social media. As a belong, if you are having a, holding a, a leadership position or somewhere, or you are <coughs> important position in any of the company, the, currently there is no policy. Some basic policies are there, but uh, the, the working related or digital uh, asset related policies are not there. So this kind of restriction should be there, proper framework, where what kind of data you can publish to the social media network and what proprietary information restriction is required. That is main important for the adoptability of any organization. If organization is making ready and they are going to provide a port adequate control, I think we can achieve. But definitely the uh, processing a large amount of data from social networking, that is also one of the aspects where the, I think that need to be handled from separately, apart from cyber security. Because some organization, they have put it already. That is not coming to the, belong to the cyber security portfolio. They have a separate uh, department. They are uh, taking care of this kind of information. Uh, they timely issuing advisory and giving recommendation to the organizing committee or CISO organization. So they, they are taking, protecting data in that, that manner. Exactly. So in the nutshell, uh, you, you rightly talked that uh, privacy framework has to be there for using the AI into, into, into any framework for the business 
uh, excellence or cyber security related requirements. But the privacy framework need to be designed, even though we are analyzing large sets of data, whether in the inside for cyber security purpose or for social media analysis and all those things. So this is very pertinent. Now, the connecting question to you, Sanjay, when we are talking about the implementation of these technologies, because you can't uh, analyze the vast data without AI, because it is, it is something which is uh, beyond the human inter in capabilities to analyze that set of data and uh, come up with the meaningful context. So I am I'm, I'm coming to you to discuss about the technological and implementation challenges in deploying Gen AI tools for analyzing social media data to address citizen grievances and how these challenges can be mitigated. Uh, basically, many organizations is already uh, already put the control over the environment for social media, yeah. maybe end users. Even IT department is not allowed to access the social media sites mm -hmm. like Facebook and Twitter and other things. As well as the so, but don't you think so that's a restrictive con yeah. Yeah. Uh, the mentality to operate. Uh, so because organizations talk about the flexibility these days also. So why to uh, put restrictions rather than adopt technologies, uh, the, the, allow to access and then govern the security in right way? Basically, uh, the, is, is the two major things. One is the security and second is the productivity. In an eight hours time, if we provide the Twitter, Facebook and other social network, then mostly two or three hours already spent. So, but just the question from my side, in that case, if a company is promoting that, go to our brand page, uh, like and subscribe, something like that, because you have to promote this, those marketing brands also. And if you are blocking at the same time, then uh, employees can say that the mentality itself is something when you are restricting something at the same time, you are asking to promote it. Just a question. Basically, uh, that is a threat and that is a promotion. Yeah. The, both the things. But we so need to manage. the right balance. Yeah. It, it, it should be balanced. Yeah. So basically, the first, if we in an office, the office hours is 9 to 5. If we allow to the, these type of the sites to access the end user, the end user is around a thousand number of users. So the one user is accessing this site 40 hours or 20 minutes, multiplied by thousand users. The productivity is used first. Second thread, the monitoring and management would be high, on a higher side. You can't control is 1,000 user is moving the data from the digital website on the, on the social website and what data they are downloading and to uploading. Maybe movies, pictures. So it's not in the relevant information. Number of times we have seen on the Facebook and Twitter, so uh, photos, pictures, music, reels, and etc. Not a relevant information, not available in the Facebook. But I would say that this is a required for the digital media. It's required for the connecting of the promotions, and but privacy should be there. And we can put on the static page, a static page, and some of the control. The maybe uh, no one is can download and upload the page, tamper the page. That that for this scenario, the spoil the image of the particular organization. Mm -hmm. Maybe. The once I download the page and put once again after the wrong input, the wrong information that the entire information would be published by the exactly that is so that is the, the some of the control is where the some or too many things is available. We can download, we can upload the thing, we can copy, we can't copy and paste the things, and these things we require to you know that is the balance from my side. So interesting because. Uh, so balance is something which is very important, right? Balance of the controls. You don't have to be that much restrictive, but at the same time, you need to say that how uh, those uploads and all those things can be detrimental to the, and sabotage the reputation of the company. So that's why uh, the security team has to do a lot of job to understand all those things. And in these regulatory landscape, how they are going to put the right set of controls. Now, your viewpoints. I think, I think uh, very interesting. I, I would slightly differ with what Sanjayji said uh, because restriction is not the only option. Uh, you have to also inculcate an organizational culture. Yeah. For example, I mean, there are, there are organizations which don't allow you to work on YouTube. 
but in my profession half the time there are a lot of things where i really use youtube exactly. so it's more of creating that inculcating that culture organization culture where people themselves do not misuse it obviously yes there so are that tools. supports creativity you mean to yeah. say yeah. there are tools like firewalls for obviously for certain sites which you want to prohibit but it's more like inculcating a culture also it is also educating educating your staff educating people as well and if we're talking about social media sites a lot of awareness needs to be created for people because we're talking about data here and when ai is being used for manipulating data people need to be made aware about the data that they are putting on uh, social media sites they have to be slightly conscious because otherwise my data as of today i think my data is all over the place and people have to be conscious about what is the data that they are experiencing yes exactly sir uh, i i agree with you but the nature of the organization of the business yeah, yeah. is well, a it also depends upon the if, if, if you're talking yeah. about observe now is it mostly on the twitter <laughs> facebook whatsapp that is a pure business on the social media exactly so they, the, they can't stop it to you right. know this way so every time so we are talking <laughs> about the business context so basically and, uh, my, my uh, company's business is other my business is production exactly. so, so basically i think about my product my, my it align with business only yes so so that's why so since beginning we are talking about that adoption of the technology they must be getting driven from top management and even in the context of the organization where we are operating so uh, now coming to you priti uh, when we talk about ai so it's it's evolving space right we all know that and the way uh, even even it is getting predicted that most of the things in cyber security like uh, sock operations is getting driven by ai right and that's why we are talking about precision ai these days also not about gen ai because gen ai is uh, if the data set is itself is not good for example the data sources which are integrated in the sock they are not fitting in the right way then there can be the false positives so precision ai is something which is talked about and the even even the technological partners have focused a lot about that and with that a lot of mundane exercises are getting replaced right for example the l1 l2 analyst job is something which is getting challenged now right and when we talk about that then uh, but it it can't solve the complex scenarios right because in in say if there is a sophisticated attack they can't do end to end analysis and get the correct output and that's why it's some sort of complementing factor so i just wanted your view point to what extent can ai replace human analysts in cyber security and what are the limitations of relying solely on the automated systems okay so here i'll give some facts and figures and then i'll tell you that uh, whether ai going to replace humans or not so we keep on hearing that especially in information and cyber security that only in india almost 80000 resources we are sort of right and if i talk about globally around 4 million uh, it, the number is approximate 4 million where we are short as of uh, information and cyber security skilled resources so in that scenario of course ai is going to help human where they can fill a gap not the skill gap but the gap where we need lot of humans to do some kind of a monitoring work repetitive task lot of data analysis the bulk data management right so the laborious work of course we can outsource to ai right so we can say that ai now going to help us and allow human to focus more on writing the strategy for the company building something which is going to add more value to the organization and focus on the more value added work rather than do, uh, doing the those repetitive tasks just like uh, you know um, the dlp alerts day and out you are getting at least you know 30000 alerts and you uh, one human cannot you know monitor those 30000 alerts you would be needing lot of people it's just a dlp there are firewall alerts there are other logs there are user uh, you know activity alerts so you can wisely think how you can utilize ai to a uh, monitor your alerts whether it's a user behavioral uh, alerts like um, uh, if user is logging 9 to 5 every day and again all of sudden he started logging 12 in the midnight it's something suspicious you know your tool can generate the alert so you should think that how uh, what kind of uh, alerts you need to generate and now you have a tool which can monitor thousand of alert in a, a fraction of second so you can increase your bandwidth as well for uh, reviewing these kind of uh, uh, issues 
and at the same time you can use your core uh, human uh, skills for doing some core jobs suppose if there is a potential cyber attack right earlier there were two resources now you have a capability to get four or five resources uh, you know those who are doing l1 and l2 job now they can do more productive work they can not only just the analyze the potential threats they can also do some threat intelligence earlier maybe we because of the money crunch uh, because of the resource issues you were not doing the threat intelligence the, the way you should be doing it you was getting the feed from thousand of the places but what you were doing those, with those feeds now you have a you know bandwidth of the resources you can utilize that so i can say that in a very, very simple word of course we need to view ai as a potential tool or a powerful tool which is going to help humans but no one can uh, you know uh, replace human because the brain uh, the kind of uh, uh, thoughtful uh, skill that uh, man is going to add in the machine, I think none of the machine will can replace this. You need man to manage the machine, not machine to manage the man. That, that's what my view is. Yeah, excellent. So very firm and concise viewpoints. So uh, if I can take a summary, what you, what you just said, uh, Preeti, for the audience, that uh, it is going to complement the uh, team. It's not like that it is going to replace. Obviously, because if you see for known attack patterns, you from detection to mitigation, you can automate using the SOAR playbooks or whatever the way you can leverage the AI to do that. But obviously, the unknown and the zero days are something where you have to just focus that. So now, if the team structure is of two or three team members, they are getting extended by the help of AI. They are basically invisible team members to your SOC area. So I would like to add that human understand business. You know in which environment you are working on. Your AI don't. So to even to make any changes or uh, you know modification in the AI, you need human to do that. AI can't even evaluate their past data or the future production and do the changes. You should do the changes in the. Uh, you, you should be doing the changes as per the need of the organization, the changes in the industry, the changes in the environment, and accordingly you will keep on improvising your tool. So uh, that's where I can say that yeah, they, they both so, will be needed. Umakant, your viewpoints. So, using AI along with the automation, we can reduce the task, and mainly the intervention when AI is coming. Lot of things because that is initial stage and it is using the LLM model. Where is the learning? If the current uh, current resource which are handling AI, they don't know how to address the issue, or maybe they have captured the wrong step, and that will be the become a viable for AI. They will do the repetitive mistake based on that. So that is the one one the bad point on this. But still, the, the if you're talking about 100 percent relying uh, relying on the AI, and that is uh, that is not good way. And the intervention of AI along with the human, that is equally important because sometimes a complex problem and complex issue can be solved by a, a human intervention, and that can, cannot be solved uh, AI itself. So definitely, AI cannot be replaced by human intervention. Yeah. So excellent. So now, last question to all of you. So uh, we will we'll, because we have some time, and we will be coming to audience also to. Hear, hear them out, their feedback, or even the questions from their side. But yes, quickly, uh, because uh, one thing we have understood clearly that AI is going to shape the future in cybersecurity for sure. And the way the advancements are happening, uh, we have to come ahead with the more and more use cases and adoption of the AI. And it's very important to understand the right set of solutions also. That uh, are, we, are we detecting the right set of use cases for us, first, first of all? Because we are just thinking that the technology is having the AI capability. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether all of us are harnessing it properly or not. Because for that, the first level, we are not clear about the, what is the huge case which AI is solving and which is technology without AI is solving. Right? So those things are very important. Now, uh, so all of you, so how can organizations ensure continuous improvement and adaptation of AI systems in cybersecurity to stay ahead of evolving threats and maintain robust customer information security because we have to uh, this generation is all about ai versus ai and we have to con continuously evolve so just quick from any one of you i i, I think it's again the cho choice of selection of the right tools there's no one solution fits all it would depend for example while we were talking here probably we we had diverse views because we come from different domains 
so it depends upon the industry you are in business you are in and you would have to adopt the right set of tools and again and augment it ai will only augment your human intervention you can't get rid of human human intervention at all but ai will augment uh, your decision making and you have to use ai more as a, as a tool rather than sort of a, you know you, you can't outsource a particular job to ai no probably if you were the uh, as you rightly pointed out your l0 l1 jobs can be done by ai and the the human intervention can go up the value chain that, that that's how it will work and that's the way it will evolve in future from others also quickly so uh, from the business point of view uh, whether it's ai or any tool uh, any tool i will see three things first is it going to um, impact our um, uh, impact us financially how much money i can save having a new tool secondly from a security background i will say what value add this tool is going to do when it is you know about identifying detecting and preventing us from any kind of uh, external as well as the internal uh, uh, threats the third thing is that how much operation uh, that is going to save because of it if ai fits into that definitely we would like to uh, you know adopt for the ai otherwise it's a, it's a buzzword i think we, we should not need to go with the you know the others are doing you should evaluate your case you should understand if it's going to add value to your organization then only go with that and then of course treat it as a normal uh, any application the way you are doing security checks end to end security management start from developing to deploying uh, 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 adopt the right uh, sdlc life cycle security controls do the regular monitoring you know ensure that there is a proper audit logs are maintained and that's how you can maintain any ai tool so uh, th that's my view quick 30 seconds from both of you yeah i agree with priti and uh, rightly uh, said so i fully agree with that thoughts so basically the from my side very quickly uh, the ai mostly used for the automation of the manual tasks first this is a very much required and second yes so for monitoring management for the security prospect as per my background so then we need to use ai tool for the security uh, threats to you know monitor and management to take immediate actions excellent my point of view usage of ai in the controlled manner where we have to categorize and what kind of data input we are giving and what kind of result we are expecting from there and the usage of data that is more important and that policy or some framework need to be defined what kind of data we are going to put and which area or which department ai is more useful that is more important because cyber security giving value at but from other excellent. marketing excellent you i think that ai will going to give some information but wrong information also will publish yeah. customer data can be exposed in that manner yeah Thank so you. thanks thanks all of you for such engaging conversation now coming to the audience for any questions because i think time's up time's and we have finished our time and it was quite engaging but any questions from any one of you no questions yeah please It was a quite an enlightening session. I learned a lot uh, that you know work can be done from AI. But one thing came to my mind that when we do business, uh, we also put in something called as morality into it. Will the AI be able to identify whether it is moral or immoral? Okay. So no, I, I didn't get whether that was a question or you just. I am asking a question whether yeah. AI can also develop and sense itself within itself whether that work which it is doing. The, what which is doing whether the work is moral or not moral okay. if anyone uh, can you can you a bit elaborate because i'm not sure i didn't get your question please. yeah the question is very simple uh, the work can be done by ai and the bots right they can replace human efforts in some places right some places yeah. they will not be able to. right but when humans do a work when we answer something when we do a work we also apply one mind that is moral or immoral work right 
Right. So will the bots be able to do that someday? Uh, yes, uh, that's what uh, nowadays we are uh, saying that ethical imperative, uh, you know, we keep on talking that. So uh, there is one parameter that we say that, that when we are designing any AI, it should be morally correct, right? Uh, suppose people now, well, there was, uh, you know, uh, even in this topic, there was a discussion on that whether uh, if you start utilizing AI tool for monitoring the social media data, right? To responses the grievances that social users are asking that point of time if your ai tool is not ethically designed you know it may give answers uh, maybe the racist maybe uh, against some of the religion so your tool should be because it's all about your training the way you train your tool the ai will reply that so when you are you know preparing the training data you should be uh, you should ensure that that your tra uh, your data will come unbiased it will be ethically good it will not generate something which will hurt the sentiments of someone else and uh, it's all about your training i will say that you can also design there are tools which are operating uh, you keep on hearing that uh, you know uh, that, that the deep fakes they are not ethical so it has both the you know uh, it, it, it has your intention if you train the tool uh, for the non-ethical activities it will generate the non-ethical data if you train it to, for the ethical of course it will give the data so it's all about your training feed there are moral and ethical issues concerned where AI is involved. And to give an example in very, very simple terms, you have a small puppy, you're training that pup. Do you want to train him as a domestic uh, pup or you want to train him as a hunting dog? It is up to you, it is the way you train. Exactly. Any, any more questions? Or otherwise we have concluded the session. Okay, with, with that, uh, so thank you all of you for, for sharing those insightful things.